How are we doing, Sean? You know, most people see a lot of things that happen in front of the camera, but few people see what happens behind the camera. And I just want to thank Sean Lackahan because you never see him. He's running that camera like a champ. Thank you, Sean. Can we please rise? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. If you would please remain standing. We're standing. Recently? Uh, we're standing because uh, we lost a icon in our community, Fred Brennan. Photo Fred, the son, photo Fred. Um, name a street after him. And very few people in the community don't know who he is and didn't love him because he was a great guy. So we are going to take a few minutes and I believe that uh, Fred will push the issue of getting the, uh, the recognition on uh, our room here um, going for, uh, we started with Fred a little while ago uh, Bill and Bill Stropel, Louis Palella, Louis, Louis Palella, Louis Palella and Sergeant Matthews um, are some of the residents that uh, that I would want to put up on the wall so that people can know the caliber of the community that we're in. Um, so I appreciate taking a few minutes um, to recognize Fred Brennan for all his contributions to this community. Thank you. And I apologize. Oh, a recent, uh, I don't know if any of you knew Father Jack Butler from Fort Montgomery. Mm -hmm. uh, he passed last week. He's uh, been in the area for years. He's lived down the way down uh, Great guy. Um, yeah, I, I just heard Friday she told me Saturday morning, so it happens. Uh, he was a, a a very special guy, Father Jack. Uh, been in the area since I was a little kid. Came up from I think the Bronx. Yeah. I came up on the weekends. You know, so. Nice. All right. It's a uh, workshop meeting. We're going to move right into new business. Uh, do we have a wastewater report? I don't know. Yes, I do. Wastewater. Average volume for the month, 0 0.667. 1.9 inches of rain recorded. Met all facilities, uh, DEC speeding permit limitations. How will lay pump stations, Havens Road, all check regularly and operating properly. 14.39 tons of digested sludge processed through a belt filter press disposal by Spectre Serve. Belt filter press in operation 10 days. 40.5 cubic foot of screenings removed by TAM. Water plant settling drainage washdown started September 28th. This, this was necessary work again, overloaded the wastewater treatment facility. Chief Operator John Jones, water plant operator Jack Sibley arranged a schedule a schedule which to alleviate these problems occurring in the future. David Hurst, operator David Hurst worked with the water department in washing down in operations. Tim Doherty worked with the street department for two days due to the lost uh, manpower issues in the street department. Operator David Hurst worked with the water and street departments one day repairing water leaks on Drew Avenue. So they've been sharing some of the guys with us a short staff at the uh, DPW. Um, that was a big help. Uh, marked out nine sewer mains during the month. Cleaning, scraping, painting operations going on nine days. Maintenance lubrication of pumps and motors as required. And that was for September. That's it. Can you go fire? Fire. Uh, 
Chief Smith has prepared a report. Uh, there were six calls in the month of September, three gas leaks, one smoke detector activation, one carbon monoxide detector activation, and one ambulance assist. Uh, through the end of September, the Highland Falls Fire Department has responded to 119 calls, which is actually seven less than the same period last year. The Orange County Parade, which I reported briefly on last month, or last meeting, um, our members worked diligently on cleaning and preparing our 15-year-old engine, number 428, for the parade. Um, every corner of the apparatus and piece of equipment received attention through preparation for the parade, and that hard work paid off. The engine was awarded the third place trophy. Um, I also want to point out that that engine responded to three emergencies and was used at a department training the same week, so it was cleaned and recleaned several times. Um, the department also received the second place trophy for marching in our class. Uh, on training, um, our members trained on engine company operations, fire attack, pumping operations, and power saws. This, uh, this week is Fire Prevention Week, and Highland Falls and Fort Montgomery departments will jointly conduct fire prevention at the Fort School on Tuesday and Wednesday at the Highland Falls Intermediate School. This is the first year we've teamed up to bring the message of fire prevention to the children of our town. This Saturday we will be continuing our fire prevention message at the Fall Foliage Festival with the use of the Orange County Fire Prevention Trailer. On equipment, uh, the annual hose, ladder, and pump testing was conducted by our vendors uh, this past Tuesday. Two lengths of one and three quarter hose actually failed and have been taken out of service. The remainder of the department's hose, ladders, and both apparatus pumps passed their annual physicals or annual tests. And that's it. EDC. Okay. Um, first of all, um, our next meeting is going to be Monday, November 14th, the second Monday of November, right in this room upstairs in Village Hall. And we'd love to have new participants. We need people with diverse interests and um, diverse talents. Come on over here. Can you see her? Mm -hmm. oh. I just wasn't sure if it's Secondly, um, Mayor Flynn, me, and uh, a new EDC member, Gary Williams, will be going to a conference, a very exciting conference this Wednesday, sponsored by the Empire State uh, Development Corporation uh, and Governor Cuomo. The, um, Heads of certain um, state agencies are going to be holding this conference, which will be sort of like a summit um, forum type conference, as far as I understand. And we'll be learning a lot um, on topics like community renewal, um, meeting people, um, learning, gaining resources that might be uh, useful for here for us here in the community. Um, the village submitted its Restore New York grant on October 3rd. There is one more portion yet to be done before September, and that's with the State um, Historic Preservation Office, but it's it's fine. September or November? Oh, I'm sorry, uh, December. Oh, I don't know what I said, I'm sorry. December, um, but we're okay with that. That's normal procedure, and the, um, award will be made, awards to whoever is granted um, the funding will be made in December. Um, we had a public hearing on it to uh, introduce the subject of the project and that is to sandblast uh, buildings that have been painted brick and this is consistent with our 2009 um, um, comprehensive plan for the village and that was one of the stipulations of the grant. 
Um, one thing, and I'm happy to say that eight of nine eligible building owners decided to participate in this. Uh, this was not dealing with the businesses of themselves, but the owners of the buildings. And it's, it was a really rewarding experience to track down the building owners and learn that they are, are interested in uh, improving the village. Um, the one point I do want to make is that we've submitted uh, the application in a way where it could cost the, um, hopefully will not cost any village taxpayer money. The grant uh, from state funding covers 90%, and there was a clause for 10% responsibility by the village. What, what has been done with this application is to apply for what's called in-kind contribution. In this grant, um, it will be acceptable to provide volunteer service and past monies that the village has paid on other projects. So um, that's good news. People have been asking about that. Um, let's see, on EDC. Oh, we are still handing out questionnaires. Um, there are some right downstairs in the lobby of Village Hall. Um, we'd like to get community input um, to help us establish project priorities. We'd like your um, eyes and ears to, to give us input on what we can do um, for Main Street and, and the community at large. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you. Was there any chances the EDC gotten a copy of the grant application through the county, I think there's small grants of about five thousand dollars related to the arts. Specifically for us, it would be the art walk. We just got one in for five thousand uh, 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 grants uh, opportunity. It just came over the internet. Uh, just came in the internet and we did that. Too. Oh, great! That's what I'm looking for. The EDC has not gotten anything. However, there are huge state grants and state grant programs. Can, can we uh, can we figure out? I don't know if there's what list we're on, but can we figure out who's sending me all the grant applications and have the EDC added to that email list? Is that possible? Okay, thank you. Good, good, good. Uh, I'm also I'm so I'm attending the uh, event on Wednesday with Barbara, but I'm also attending a roundtable tomorrow uh, in New Windsor. Uh, for community development as well. And you say a little bit different things, we'll say. Hopefully it's not the same on board. Um, we need, uh, I need a motion to approve uh, the minutes written in a regular board meeting October 3rd, 2016. You guys are the only two here, so it's gonna have to be a motion to approve. That motion. I'll second it. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed. I need a motion for training requests for village staff in Fishkill on October 25th, 12.30 to 3.30. You have that in your packet. That's fine. I approve it. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Thank you. Uh, if you have a memo about uh, surplus equipment, I would like to, not that it's a big deal, but I'd like to hold off on the Port of Crown Victoria until we see if I tried to call Kevin today. I don't know if he can use the car instead of a truck, but if we already have it, it's on the insurance, depending on what they have to do with it. Uh, if that can get up to Bog Meadow and do it, I know it's on a truck, but if it can get up to Bog Meadow. If it can't, but it can't. Yeah. But I just want to touch base with them and see because if we it's already here, yeah. then we don't have to do anything. If I don't think it meets their needs, but okay. Just a quick good. check, but I definitely have yeah. no problem surplusing the other two. No, I, and I agree. And one of the um, guy Gary did a good job with this because on the bottom it says that we still need to have one track. Right. Which is important. Yeah. yeah. He, he's on top of that. So. Uh, yeah. Whatever you want to do with the vehicle, but I don't think it's one that we can use. But we we can look into it before. Uh, Right, I just want to don't want to get rid of it and all of a sudden it could be something they could have used and I don't know the condition of it. I, I think uh, it's probably high mileage. I think that's a lot of miles more than there's, miles. there's a ton of miles, yeah. But again, if it's usable, okay. it's not a primary vehicle they need. Uh, if someone's taking the truck up to Bach Meadow, second person could use the car, do meter readings, things like that. So 
I want to double check and see if we can't get away with utilizing what we already have well, rather we, than. We talked about um, uh, they have money in their fund, uh, the reserve funds for a vehicle for them at some point. Yeah, that's not happening, but I appreciate the thought. <laughs> <laughs> well, they don't have enough. Yeah. Well, they don't have enough yet, but they I don't have enough yet, and they don't have enough depth for a second vehicle. So, uh, that's right, the first vehicle. Okay, I get your point. I mean, for, for the second one, we're looking, we're looking for a junker that two or three years to get rid of it again. At that point, another police vehicle, maybe the to one of the Tahoes, again, we can, then we can excise that out and give that to the War Department. What? What's it's just not a vehicle from Fort Montgomery? They, it's not for that purpose. They don't have the title yet, to my knowledge. That's what I asked Gary about. He didn't have the title, so he didn't want to do any work on it. There's. I think there was something, too, with Fort Montgomery had to delegate it. It had to be for a fire. Well, the only conversation that I'm aware of was for a fire. And okay. I had talked to Gary, and it needed a lot of work. And you know, it didn't make sense to me as a trustee to invest that much money into that vehicle. It would have to be they were going to do new tires, which were about that's a thousand dollars, all four new tires. I mean, yeah, that's. Um, but this needs to be. There was some concern that uh, another piece of equipment from uh, the fire department was being traded. As far as I know, that's totally false. So, um, you know. Deal's going on, I like it. No, there isn't a deal going on. Don't start rumors. Um, but if if it's acceptable to Fort Montgomery to give it to the water department and we acknowledge that we're just putting new tires on it and once it goes, it goes. The, that could be a new discussion. Right. But. We need we need to move forward on this. We also uh, we need to put in the I don't know if the Kevin requests for a part time person a laborer. We're going to need to put in for a laborer. Uh, Mr. McDonald left. Um, but this is our opportunity to cover these weekends, so we don't have overtime. So the laborer that we put in can utilize uh, we can utilize the weekends at nights, kind of cut down on overtime. Um, so, are you okay with uh, putting the paper for a labor for the water department? And we'll do the specs. We'll talk to Kevin and Gina tomorrow. And From what I understand, it has to be an operator. Well, we'll, we'll not, figure it out not tomorrow. Not a labor reader. Not right. a labor. No. We'll figure it out. Okay? Yeah, it's got to have an operator's license. Part time. That's what I'm told. Right. Kevin said they have to have an operator's license. Okay. And the same with the sewer plant. I thought that was the. We, we, no. 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 Okay. Sewer and water is too. And water's a lot more involved. Sewer is not. But uh, I mean, we can do. The if we if we want him to take the weekends, he's got to have me an operator. But we can do a labor to do other things, but then it doesn't it doesn't serve our needs. <laughs> so, but as long as you guys are okay, we'll look at it. We'll look in tomorrow exactly what needs to go on the paper, and put in for uh, a person for the water department. Okay. While we're on that. We're gonna do the same for the uh, for DPW. Okay. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Okay. You so right now we need to move on. If it's okay, we'll just bring them. We'll do the Crown Vic first meeting in November after we just make sure that no one needs it. Um, so we need to excess excess the uh, the two tractors. Do I have a motion? I make a motion. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed. We have a request from Vision for uh, they're going to redo some of their uh, decorations. They these guys know how to stretch out trees. I'll tell you what, they can stretch out a, uh, a holly like no one's business. But it's time to get some new uh, stuff. So they're asking for twenty five hundred, and we budgeted. We budgeted you, but it's in the beautification. What do we have in the beautification? Yeah. We don't. We didn't use that much. So far, we haven't, and I know it, it was a healthy amount. Okay, we had ten grand in there, yeah. and I, I think we—that's what we started with. Right. We started with something? That's what we finished with. That's what's in the Bible. Right. We start, We had ten to start off the year, and now we're at seven now. No. The budget was seven. Really? No. Okay. No. It, so we budget seven. It was initially ten, but it got done. Show like ten. Uh, anyway, they're looking for twenty-five. We have the money. I think Vision does an incredible job. Uh, the flower boxes that oh, Lord. the volunteers planted in the spring 
whoever came up with the combination of plants was a genius because now the remaining decorative grasses that are plumes still remain and they put in more seasonal fall foliage decorations and they look great. Some people were real good at that. Right? Yeah. Definitely not me. I think. But, uh, Doris Lynch. Yeah. The ones in front, too, look fantastic. Uh, and I know they hate recognition, but I want to thank Mr. and Mrs. Wicks that, uh, that went down and uh, they worked on Memorial Park and the uh, in front of the visitor sign this past weekend. And they put in a, a lot, of, lot of hours. And uh, again, just coming down, no scheduled, you know, big schedule event of cleaning. They're just vision, the vision, no matter who it is, vision's always in there two or three people going in. They are the custodians of the village, and I, and I really appreciate uh, what they do. So I have no problem with 25, you know, it's, it's well spent. And they don't play any games. They look for every dime being spent. I will be happy to move that. Boom. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Thank you. Um, moving into the workshop, um, CBDG 215. Right, um, Matt, I'm sorry, I have an old. Did I show the wrong one? Resolution. I have. And is this for Bob Yes. Request for real property tax exemption of the village owned water supply. I'll read back at this issue again. This is just for the county. Our this is for the county. Exemption. Yeah, we have to do it every year. Okay. Um, now, do we have to go for the town or is that coming later? This is this for this both. This takes care of Right. So this takes care of the county and the town, it's but not the school. Resolution requesting real property tax exemption of the village owned water supply property. Whereas the village of Highland Falls is the owner of real property in the town of Highlands identified on the tax map. Section 1, Block 1, Lot 2. Whereas the above real property is devoted solely to public use as part of the village water system as a catchment and reservoir. And whereas the real property tax law, Section 406 3, provides the authority of each taxing district in which municipality owned property used in such manner is located to grant a whole exemption from real property taxes levied by the taxing district. And whereas such exemptions for the Village of Highland Falls water supply site, real property would provide a direct immediate benefit for the taxpayer and water users of the Village of Highland Falls, which would enhance real property ownership and exemplify a spirit of intermunicipal cooperation between the County of Orange and the Village now therefore be resolved that this Board of Trustees on behalf of the Village of Highland Falls, its taxpayers, water system users, and citizens hereby petition the County of Orange to grant a whole exemption from Orange County real property taxes commencing for the calendar year 2018 on a parcel of real property in the town of Highlands identified as Section 1 Block 112. And it is further resolved that a copy of this resolution be forwarded to each of the following to request their attention to this petition, processing of the same and affirmation action. The Honorable Stephen Brescia, Chairman of Orange County Legislator, Honorable Melissa Bonacek, Leader, Majority Leader, and the Honorable Michael Amo, the Minority. The adoption of the foregoing resolution. Oh, do I have a motion? You do. Second. Roll call. Trustee Murphy? Aye. Trustee Mellon? Aye. Mayor Flynn? Aye. I need a motion to approve the bills and claims for the fiscal year 16-17 and the amount of $79,571.27. I make the motion to pay the bills. I'll second it. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Sold. All right, we have the uh, CBG 2015 Senior Center bid. Specs and plans. Questions? Comments? I am going to have a discussion with Bill of uh, Costco. Uh, there's a couple other things we have to discuss with Al and we're dealing with that. But um, have you looked it over? And uh, you know, I get some questions. Yeah. 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 I think that you know it, it depends on. I know. There's not a lot of money there, and, and we're eating it up with uh, engineering fees, um, and then prevailing rate jobs. Uh, so that all this stuff is much happier. Uh, it's not a lot of work. Uh, spec document is. We can use this as a template, and maybe if we go out to bid for like a plumbing, like a Taj Mahal, yeah, rather than uh, 
turn it into uh, right. what it's something that's not. Um, I, I think that maybe we can release parts of this job uh, as a plumbing job, and then another part is the uh, electric from a couple, you know, sole proprietor, uh, exempt from corporate uh, or the prevailing rate. Um, guy owns a business, comes in and bids plumbing. Has no employees, so it's, this, is, this is the type of job. It's, it's two bathrooms. It doesn't need to be a uh, well, $100,000 job. In possible defense of the engineer who did that, we are using grant money. So Oh, I understand that <laughs> aspect, but do we have to proceed in, in the same type of, uh, if, if we have grant money, can we uh, earmark it as we see fit as long as it meets the criteria for grant? I would hope so because I, I think for a bathroom to have to go through that amount of uh, documentation and, and sheets just seems overkill. Yeah, I think so. Well, we'll, we'll, so we'll have a conversation we'll, with we'll be talking about that, yeah. and we'll uh, and we'll make sure one for this project, but two moving forward. Again, we're building a new hotel, different story. We're redoing the water and sewer for the entire village. I'm looking for that kind of that. But, uh, you know, again, I, and I did have a conversation with prior to it. You know, we walked the, uh, the building, and I said, you put in, it's really, it's not even redoing the bathrooms, it's just ADA. Just make it ADA compliant. I'm like, give me an ADA, one ADA bath, leave the rest. And so basically the goal was to try and maximize the money throughout the building, not spend it all on one bathroom. So, is the money there? Well, there's 50, we have the 50. But, uh, the we don't have the other 50. And I'll have to say, though, she hates when I bring her in the month. Gina has been making calls weekly, if does. not two or three times a week. She is personal friends now with half the people in DASME and personal enemies with the other. What, what's uh, the status on that, Gina? Do you they still claim it's in review, legislative review. What does that mean, though? They have to we're not the money. contract. What's that? They're reviewing the. The documents okay. and have to, no, the, where you have to get a contract to sign with the state to do the work. So okay. We don't have that document okay. that actually um, gives you the money. You right. know, you've been awarded it, but you have to enter into a contract with the state. That contract is what's not here yet, and the it's in the legislature's review. Okay. Speaking of money that's not here, that's what they tell me. The uh, every day. I have I've spoken to. Um, County Executive Newhouse. Uh, he does have a uh, possible hundred thousand dollars for us for the elevator, but that is also one of these awesome brands that take two or three years to get. We have one hundred twenty thousand coming from Scoofus uh, for several different projects of our choosing, and that was um, hemmed and hawed by Al because he, he said just make sure it's not a sand brand. So when I call Scoofus, what kind of grant is it? A sand brand. So that's at least a two to three year grant as well, uh, where you get it, but you don't get it for another year or so. That's currently what we're waiting for. Right. The same. Exactly. So it's the same. It's the same thing of what we're waiting here. So that's another 120 that uh, from Scoofus, and then we are we are in the process of moving the money that was due in 06 for Merms, and I did have a meeting with Larkin uh, and Scoofus on getting us additional help for from DOT because I don't think that should have anything to do with the grant. When DOT needs to fix 9W drainage, that's 80 to 90% of the problem. It's not so much that the Merns Avenue is a problem, it's the drainage, it's the water coming off of 9W because of improper drainage. So they are, both of them have stated they will are definitely behind us and they will give us whatever assistance they can give us. Okay? Um, we're going to go ahead into, we were trying to wait for Elise. I know, I just ran into her actually. Over oh, is she on her way? She was at the ZBA meeting, I believe. Right. Is she on her way over, or are they still going? They were still going when I was there. Okay, do you... I'm not in any rush to the board. Well, we're done. <laughs> so, do you need to speak to Elise, or does she need to speak to you, or what um, would you like we to were... present? Sorry, I'm, again, for just for the record. Of course, <laughs> so, yeah, come on yeah, Thanks. I'm hiding in the corner back there. Uh, take a seat. <laughs> thanks. Uh, Taylor Palmer with Cuddy and Fader on behalf of the applicant, uh, our construction company limited. Um, we have spoken with the, uh, the village attorney, and again, we made a submission to this board uh, last week. 
to add in some inclusions to respond to some of the comments, particularly uh, the questions regarding spot zoning. Mm -hmm. uh, and the other issue that we uh, responded to uh, was the road that it's not, you know, there are no roads or otherwise included on the plat that was otherwise uh, before this board. I think the only thing that we wanted to additionally provide to the board was clarification that the, the proposal. Oh, <laughs> speaking of the demo. We waited, and I know you were you're coming. Come on, sit right here. <laughs> we just started with them, so we finished everything else. Okay. Thank you. Um, I'll, I'll start from the beginning. Yeah, go ahead. Again, Taylor Palmer from Cutting Fader on behalf of the applicant out construction company limited. As I mentioned to the board, I had spoken uh, with the village attorney, um, and we made a submission to this board, again, responding to the two particular issues that were presented at the public hearing, on that being spot zoning, uh, and the issue, uh, again, concerning uh, a road that was shown on the final plat. Uh, and as I mentioned, the two, of the two items that we wanted to mention to this board are indeed the proposed rezoning had no impact on the subdivision approval that was previously granted by the village planning board. That, that subdivision plat has been filed and recorded with the county. Uh, the statute of limitations period has run uh, on that particular plat. So this rezoning has no relation other than the fact that the rezoning relates to a lot that was created by the subdivision. So it will have no change in the ownership interests in the property. Uh, actually, the parcel that was uh, being, there was a question regarding the ownership of the parcel two, which is the larger, uh, lower parcel of the two lots um, and ownership of it. That lot has no proposed change. It will remain the uh, zoning that was previously provided on that lot. Only the northern lot, which is not under option um, for Cedar Hudson, was proposed to be rezoned. So again, the, two, the issues regarding spot zoning, it, isn't consistent, it is consistent with the zoning that are the properties adjacent to it. Um, further, um, the road that was shown on the plat, we had submitted a letter to the planning board uh, during that review that identified um, what the existing right of way that was shown there was through deeds. We had a letter that was provided by our engineering consultant that identified what deeds and title reports and, and so on and so forth and filed maps showed the existing right of way. We're not proposing an easement there. In fact, our client had proposed one and at the request of the planning board, we removed that right of way. Uh, that was in response to a letter from Val Allo, uh, who actually, as we provided in the, in the board's uh, packet this week, supported both the subdivision plat and the rezoning. We have a letter from her that we included in your packet so that you see um, she was in fact in support of both of these. Uh, through, again, the Owl Construction Company submitting for a rezoning and for um, the subdivision plat. So again, we addressed the concerns that were meant during the public hearing uh, at the planning board level. And then again, um, as we've uh, spoken to council and provided to this board, um, we've addressed, well, we respectfully submit that we've addressed uh, the concerns regarding spot zoning um, and as well as the, uh, the road issue, again, that, that right away had been removed from the prior plat and it was filed with the county. And again, this rezoning, just, I, I don't mean to beat that horse here, but the rezoning has no impact on subdivision that was previously approved and filed um, and that statute of limitations period that's wrong for that um, I do, uh, I do uh, have to apologize because one of our board members had to run upstate and he was uh, very intent on talking to this uh, issue. Um, so I don't know if we can do any changes today. I would, if we haven't made a change over the table so Brian can be here because he had talked to me about he definitely wanted to speak on this issue. Well, while we have both the chairs, yes. can we yeah. ask right. questions? Yeah. Please. <laughs> um, now, then, if I'm hearing you correctly, the right of way, it's not an approved road, and there is no, um, the, it doesn't automatically give Cena Cutson approval to use that as a road, unless it comes back to us. Again, the issue before this board is a, is a rezoning petition yeah. has nothing to do with the right of way or the ownership interest in the property. But there is a right of way, and I mean we submitted paperwork showing you know Google Map images and, and other images that show what is considered you know according to the maps Pine Terrace Road. We didn't submit that as a road. We've submitted that as a right of way, and it's one existing. Um, we provided the deed reference, but for the reference of this board, um, the deed is Liber uh, 1288, page 123. And again, this is in a letter provided by our... Uh, and that's owned by Peregrine Apartments? No. 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 That's a separate... That parcel is not part of the, of, of the application for this board um, either, but that is a separate road. I can show you on the map. Um, for the record, I'm referring to a Google map image, uh, an aerial of the property. This is the... This is considered Pine Terrace Road. This runs behind the hotel, so the West Point Motel. Peregrine Apartments is right here. So this, this is a separate... Right that is an existing road. Correct. Our, our client has access off of Regina Road, which runs directly to this location here. 
this is all part of what is considered parcel two. So there's access from Regina Road for the second parcel, and there's also access from Havens Road up here. So the parcel really runs, you know, something along that line. It actually outlines that parcel. The zoning map itself actually shows a much yeah, clearer. Exactly. So island, that that yeah. little funky island in there is Peregrine. Parcel two runs around it. And then parcel one is only this parcel with this little strip here. So the parcel that the option that Cena Cousin has is this parcel here. Parcel one is not within the option. We're proposing the rezoning of just this strip, which is part of parcel one. Again, not part of the option. So parcel two, again, is staying the same. There's no change proposed whatsoever. Only parcel one, which is. Now, when does the 30 day clock start ticking on the option? From Cena Cutson, because I was told by one of the ALOs, one of the male ALOs, that at the beginning of last summer that it was on 30 days, and I was led to believe the clock was ticking. That clearly isn't the case. And if I may, ownership interest of the lot again is not considered a consideration for this board as far as a rezoning petition, regardless of whether the parcel is 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 rezoned will not affect that interest. But for the record, it was, I believe, on or around October 5th uh, when the option to exercise was, was provided to Cena Cuts in order for them to exercise or not. Um, so that would give them 30 days from that time. I don't know the exact day. We're not uh, involved in, in the optional property. But again, I understand um, that October 5th was the, was the day that it was they were provided. The, the rezoning will, I mean, if they want to Totally different, but it will. Um. <laughs> I can, I can, I can. All I can say is, as far as the, the lots are concerned, the rezoning that, that excuse me, the, the subdivision has already taken place. Parcel mm -hmm. one is a distinct <laughs> lot and would not change no matter what it is zoned through this rezoning process. The proposed rezoning is so that you have one lot that's zoned consistently as its adjacent properties. Otherwise, we're leaving a lot here zoned with partially in another district. Right. So really what you're doing is affecting the same process that your, your, your admissible approvals would otherwise allow for. There's a unique code provision, and I, I, could, I have to turn to the village attorney to say which it is, that if a commercial use, which again, this is zone yeah. B1, were to be proposed on that lot, similar, they, they, some at the owners, whether it's Val, Allo, or you know, Frankie, new, new, like Frankie, Johnny, Stevie, whoever comes before that board could have the opportunity to develop that parcel, including this non-rezoned portion. However, at this time, if it is not rezoned, you leave a, a lot that's already subdivided through the statute of limitations period, filed in the county with this sort of left out piece. And again, that part is not an option to. So say. come November 5th, the option by Cena cuts and will have expired. I'm not even, I'm not worried about that. I just want to. I oh, just, I'm really I, I understand. <laughs> uh, but I, I'm more concerned uh, that, uh, again, I'm, I'd like to see it taken care of, but Brian had a lot to speak on, so I can't, I don't want to change anything tonight, and I hate asking you to come back, uh, that he did have to go upstate and uh, take care of family matters. But, um, that's just, I, I, if you, now I, I, we have nice packets. I, I know he was given one. Uh, so I know that he'll be prepared when, when we come back. Right. And we hope, we hope that the images will help address how you know de minimis the proposed rezoning change is and how it is consistent with those properties. Again, it should be that option, while not relevant to the petition before this board, right. would, would should run on or around that November 5th deadline. Again, ownership of the property shouldn't reflect no. how this board makes a determination. Right. I defer to the, 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 the board's attorney for that. We would, however, request, considering um, that the board will table the matter this evening, if, if the board would consider authorizing the attorney to prepare a resolution um, for consideration by this board at the next meeting pertaining to approval of, of uh, the rezoning petition. Because we have a scale. Sorry. I think what he's trying to say is he'd like a decision at the next meeting. Right. And could could you authorize me to prepare? I, I, I can authorize her to prepare a resolution. I can't give you I can't give you a guarantee that's going to be approved. Again, I, I certainly can't ask for that. I can only ask the, right. the that's that's okay. Well, I'm, I'm my I still the spot zoning thing at least. I know you you don't seem to think that's an issue Absolutely here. Absolutely not. Okay, because I know the planning board was sort of divided also. No, divided. it actually wasn't. 
I was just Harvey. Was was saying yes. that? Okay. So basically, it was a forty-one vote on it. Well, he was concerned. It, he wasn't so much concerned about spot zoning as a to set some sort of precedent. And I explained to the planning board that um, it won't set any precedent. Precedent. Uh, that uh, anyone who comes before this board for a rezoning is taken, you know, the facts are the facts of that particular application. Um, spot zoning would, would be, okay, if you had a complete, what he was worried about, let me just give you a concrete example. You have single family homes surrounding a parcel of property. That person comes in and wants to put high density housing on that parcel and this board zones that for high density to the detriment of all the surrounding properties uh, that that could be considered spot zone and if that case were in front of this board i would want to take a very close look at it before you made a decision and but I this know, is not and i know they're watching this one so we want to but it's, it's completely right? different okay then if, if that's okay yeah, and that's that's something we need to visit revisit on that, that piece as well. I have a critical question. I mean, well, we passed a, a local law um, before you were our attorney um, with the intent that if an organization came in that was a 501c3 but wanted to do something with the land that was not in the best interest of the village. For instance, this is to protect the scenic view of at least one, if not more, board members of a not-for-profit. We probably really don't want to discuss Less. that. Okay. Yeah, we're not, we're not going to discuss it. Okay. Uh, does anyone have a problem with us putting this together? For next meeting, for a vote? no guarantee. All right, I have no problem. Okay, good. With the you sure? The fact that it's in putting it's just putting the paperwork together. Oh yeah. That's good. Yeah. Okay. And a little short tonight. <laughs> okay. Well, I appreciate all your time, and again, thank you to the thank attorney. You. She's been very helpful throughout the process, and certainly have a great asset. Good to go. Thank, thank you. you. Appreciate it. Don't praise him too much. Yeah, I would. <laughs> I would if I were you. I got you should say she really gave me a hard time. Down here, yeah, I right? Just, Did that make it too easy? Yeah, yeah, right. Just not worth. Those three bills we just got are not paying those now. Thank, thank you again. Okay. Thank you. Um, one other thing, I meant to do it in the uh, oh, no, workshop. Uh, I talked to June Gunza. I was hoping uh, I was hoping June would be here. I talked to June Gunza about the planning board consolidation. Though they've though they've said okay. April, uh, Eric and others wanted to have the planning board, new planning board, in place by January, so they would have time to set everything up so April they can actually hit the ground running and not reorganize in April. I mean, uh, to me, it can be done this month. It, we could pick the people, it's, I don't, but that's Eric's uh, request, and I, I, I'm with it. So I mentioned in June that we'd set now, we would set November for letters on the 10th, decide in December on the two board members of the village would put on the new planning board and that way they could meet in January to start preparing to do the, the new board. Okay? Is that good for you guys? So we'll as soon as possible. The municipal agreement needs to be changed because they put in that April first date. No no that's the that is the date of the starting of the new new oh, board. So you're just saying pre organize everything? We're going to pick the people prior to. Oh, okay. It's I just picking the so. people. Okay. We're just picking the people now. That way it gives them time to get together, make their, which okay. picking the people is you picking the people. But unless, unless 20 other people apply, who knows what's happening. I, mean, I know that majority of people on the board are already intent on staying, so it's up to the boards. They, but, they got the boards. Cool. So I want to put, put it out there now for November. Take letters in November, make decision in December, and let the board start getting organized in January. Good? Okay. Good? That might also facilitate the work that's being done on unifying. Exactly. The well, that's what, yeah, that's the point. And that's the, to get it together. Thank you. Uh, public comment. I'm here for public comment. 
I'm here for 65 Star. I want to know if anything is going on yet. I haven't heard from anybody yet. You haven't heard from anybody at all? Ever? No, not one time. Uh, it's a my understanding that we've been up to the property previous. <coughs> my, my, my problem, Pat, here is that there is damage, and I supply there's damage on the inside of the house. $15,000 for damage. I submitted pictures, everything's rusted out. Submitted pictures, travelers will not acknowledge the claim. They're saying it went back to 2015. So the status of limitations has expired. So my thing is that if I don't get that claim fixed, I don't want that water pipe on my property anymore. My last communication, and that's why I wanted to make sure that no one's been in contact with you, the last communication I had from you was that you fixed it, it's done, we're good to go. Well, we got the email. I don't, I, don't, I don't want nobody to come, if you want to come on the property and fix the issue, I'm okay with that. I don't want the village to come on that property and put a new pipe on the property and still run the water to the property. With all due respect, if it's not being, the issue is not being addressed in my house now, what happens 20 years from now when I have another problem? I, I'm not asking for anything special to be done. I just, anybody can come and look at it. There's damage here. I just want it fixed. But if the damage is not going to be fixed, if you're going to fix the pipe on the outside, I don't want another pipe on my property when the damage inside the house is not being fixed. There is that whole steps and everything has separated about two inches now. Do we have, I never saw any, and I'm not trying to put it on anyone, I never saw any official document stating that it was coming from that pipe or from a, even a private contractor you have that went into your house and saw the damage and said, it's coming from here. It's coming from the village pipes. Now I have a house that's on Edward Street just above yours and we've had work done to stop drainage coming in. My water's coming up underneath and on a heavy rain, and sometimes not even when it's raining, I'm getting two or three inches in the basement that I pump out. So my thing is, because we're on a, a mountain, do you have anything from a contractor or something that says, because if, if it's our fault, it's our fault, we gotta do it, that's fine. You guys do you have something from a contractor that says you it's ours? It, you guys said it in the 4-4 meeting, that it was your problem. Well, we, we, we said we'd look into it, do we thought it could be. Uh, we don't have a right of way through there that I know of. Uh, we talked about possibly doing a drainage project up there along with the south end. There's other places that have greater need, believe it or not, that impacts more homes with, with drainage problems uh, and we're continuing to chase grant money. So that's basically, uh, is there some problems in the street up there? Without a doubt. <coughs> There's other places that, that have the same issues, lower burns, the drainage, that have issues flooding. Yeah, but you guys acknowledge, you said in the meeting, that it's our issue. The village attorney yeah. asked you, was it your issue? You said yes. She I, asked you, did you have an easement? And you said no. It's, well, it, we, it was on the board meeting. Did well, you, you said it's our problem. She said, you're saying it's our issue? And she asked you, and you said yes. I, I thought that it could be, yeah. It wasn't thought, you said yes. I, I thought that it could be. That's one person on the board. I went up and I looked at it a couple times and you and I handed trans emails back and forth. And as of the last email you sent me that you didn't want us on your property that you're gonna fix it yourself. You no, said, I didn't say I was gonna fix it myself. I told I have the emails. I do too. Okay. Well I'm telling you that I don't want the pipe on my property anymore because it's not it, it, Bob, if you guys are not fixing the issue now, what does it say it's gonna be fixed twenty years from now? There's another issue. Jose, I, I I'm not I'm not again. It's, it's, not, it's not a pipe that the village would have installed. It's a rock line trench. Now, it's coming from the sidewalk. It's in this exactly. It's coming from the train on the sidewalk. So who else would? I, I don't. I don't know. It, it's it, there's similar things that have gone on the yeah. under streets in the village. Up McCarthy's, it's got a trench that goes under the road and through his garage, drops down, and you open up the store in his garage, and the water's pouring in. Did the village do that? It's, it's hard to say. It's, well, if it's going from the drain in the street. To the drain in the middle school. No, then that's the problem, is that if, if that happened in the last 10 years, 10, 15 years, then I would have said it's definitely the village without question because we've had that control. Back in the day when these pipes were put down and when five or six people, not the village and not village officials, five or six people did a majority of the work in this town, 
They just did it. It was just dumb. And things were hooked into main pipes. Things were hooked in. And this, I'm finding this out as I got here. This is, I understand you have an issue. There are hundreds of issues. And a perfect example is the line to the high school. There's no paperwork showing who owns the line. And, and that was done recently, and in the not, 70s. It's not like it's, uh, we're ignoring you. There's, there's, there's projects. Well, you are because you have, you're not responding to Jose, I have two I, foot I water in my basement. I have two foot water in my basement. I pump my basement out. I have my insurance pay for the boiler and all those things. When I We've got issues. Now. All over Saturday has issues. There's issues on MERS. It, it's not, we're not saying, uh, you know, forget it. There's, there's a time when we're going to resolve the issues of drainage on the south end. There's a time when we're going to resolve the issues with the drainage on MERS Avenue. Same thing with the top of Schneider. And we are, and we are, I apologize, we are That's moving right. forward on your area. We have actually talked to the engineer uh, because you aren't the only one. Mal Jennings and a couple other people have, have everyone in the village is basically on Merns Avenue is actually collapsing. And that's not from the last several years. That's from 15 years of no one's looking at it. We're looking at it. Uh, there are other areas, but several people in your area have also talked about there's issues. So we have already talked to our engineer. We have already designated your area as a priority, meaning Sweezy, what's this one? Prospect? And Schneider. Okay. Uh, that whole area shifting over towards the middle school to for the next project for drainage, sewer, and water. So that's one of the things that he's looking for right now as far as a grant, is he's looking for the money so that we can actually fix it. As you said, I agree with you. You don't want the pipe in your yard? I don't want the pipe in your yard. I don't mind. But we're gonna, that's the thing is, I, I don't care about the pipe being on my property, because whether it's underground or not, but if there's damage to the property from that pipe and the village is not fixing it out, to me they're not gonna fix it later. Well, that's so, we're, we're trying to come up with an actual real solution that's not a six week fix. It's not a band-aid. We're actually trying to fix areas of the village for the next 50 years. And it's nobody's fault, there's no blame. A majority of these pipes have been in the ground for over 50 to 60 to 80 years. 80 years without anything done to them. With no plan in place. I just We're trying to get there as quick as we can. I got my steps dropping the whole side of the house. The concrete is attached to the concrete foundation. It has separated over two inches. The steps are falling in. There was a hole when it was when I gave you back the film months ago, and it just keeps getting worse and worse and I worse. I understand. When I had when I got this email and when we received uh, calls from our insurance company with the threats, uh, I, I apologize because I was I did ask for an email to go to you, and obviously it didn't get there, and I apologize. Definitely never got there. Uh, but the other thing is, and you know when you uh, when. You upset our insurance company quite a bit with your phone well, calls. Well, I mean, I, and Pat, with all due respect, I got a few hundred thousand dollars worth of damage. I, I understand. So they haven't heard the end of me. It's, it's still okay. Well, you know, I'm I mean, just we 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 have been up at Donac, but we haven't been there though. Kevin's been up there. Bob's been up there. Al's been yeah, up there. Saying, right, I agree. Everybody's been up there and looked, and we have addressed the problem. We have addressed right. your concerns. At this point, it was solution. One, I don't, I don't even know if we had a, Bob, I know Bob had a discussion, he thought, his, his answer was, if, if, this is our issue, we have to get it on immediately. I don't know if I ever had a defense, I know in the meeting he might have, this, I think it might be our problem. Uh, we never got anything definitive from Kevin. In no way are we trying to shirk our responsibility at all. We want, that's what we're here for. We are here to serve the residents and, and, and fix problems. But what we can't do is when we have six areas that are in the same situation and we don't have definitive proof that it is the villages, that it's not water coming up, that it's not a, as Bob said, I've been to that house. It's an underground stream. It actually comes from 9W down the hill into, the, into their house. That's the way it was set up. That's the way Skeeters was set up. It was actually a stream going through the bottom of the bar. That's how it was. I, I wasn't here. I wasn't born. I can't, I can't say it. What I can say is the paperwork now, what I can say is the procedures now that we're putting in place to fix the problems. And again, if we could do a stop, a stop gap to assist you if it was in fact the village's problem, then I'm for that. But 
another issue that we so have is a bigger cheap, issue yeah, it's not a cheap is we're trying to fix the problem so that if this drainage is fixed that all of a sudden you don't have the water coming around the other way now going to the other side of your house we're trying to actually fix the whole block because it's not water that's coming from somewhere else it's coming off the mountain and if we don't fix the entire area you're still going to get water it's not going to be a single pipe that might be broken it's it's that's a tough spot anyway, because if you stop up on West Street and look down there, you're in the worst possible spot you could be in. Just for the record, the pipe can be put <coughs> on the property that's already there. I have zero issues with that. Okay. I just my issue is that I don't want that pipe on my property unless somebody's paying for the damage inside as well. That's my only concern. That's my only issue. And I don't even think that's again, there's Quite a few pictures that travelers received. Everything, wood, everything is rotted out down there. Steps, everything, wood burning stove, every single thing, there is rotted out. And anybody can come and look at it. It's not an issue. I just don't want unless the inside is going to be paid to be fixed. Then I have no issues with that outside pipe. If I don't get that pipe fixed, then when it is fixed, then I would like for it just to be fixed. Well, the, the, okay. the, the contents of the house, I believe that's a homeowner's policy that should pay for that, not the uh, homeowners won't touch it. And what was what was the reason? Why? No, because they're saying it's not their pipe. It's okay. They asked for a, a guy to give them um, uh, uh, proof that if, if, if that pipe was mine, and that pipe is not mine. It says that's their pipe. They gave them a copy of the tape, okay. and they said all they would do is. If they want, they'll put the claim in, they'll pay for it, and then they'll go after travelers, which I don't want to do because I don't like that. I don't want to be in the middle of that issue. But what you're saying is, you, you, uh, do you have a professional that has said that, okay, the pipe is cracked, the pipe's broken, whatever it is? Do you have a professional saying that that is what's causing the water in your basement, not just drainage, not just water coming off the mountain? It's six and a half feet from where the pipe is gone. So where the pipe rots away and there's no longer a pipe, six and a half feet to the right is my foundation, the house, and that's where the water's coming in at. Exactly at that, at the broken pipe area. And there's just a pool of water there. You can see in the, in the film, there's just, just a pool of water there. And that water is, again, six feet from where the water's coming into the house. Okay. I'm going to talk to the uh, engineer and see uh, what we could do as far as the pipe itself and and the drainage and then uh, we'll get back to you. Okay. Appreciate it. Thank you. That's good. Uh, Bang. we've got signage. Bang the Malarkey Town of Highlands regarding the Town of Highlands second annual St. Patrick's yes. Parade. Yes, we will be seeing some of these around the town and they're for donors. Raffle tickets. This is uh, with my application. I do have to include the map. This one you guys can keep for now. This one I just wanted you to look at only because what I'm here for this evening is two things. One, to request that the flag raising ceremony occur two in the afternoon. A lot of people told me. Last year's it's been like rather early, and I figure it'd be more or less conducive to some people's connotation of St. Patrick's Day is to imbibe and. Well, I'm assuming that the, we raised it at 10 o'clock, they should have been drinking for at least two hours. <laughs> St. Patty's Day. I have no problem with two o'clock. It's always been that. It's always been the time we've always raised it. No one's ever asked to change the time. Okay. If you and now are we coinciding that with the parade? That's what I would like. One individual standing in front of uh, my town marketplace, Albert, gave me permission to use the rear parking lot as a staging area. There's somebody standing at the corner there, and they can look down Main Street, see that flag going up, and wait about five to ten minutes, start the parade, which leads me to my second question. I've seen them out there before. The, the village has bleacher seating. Mm -hmm. Seriously, I'm working in a little bit. Oh, Come on, okay. Charlie. 
don't work, me. Yes. I'm making Well, I was hoping that perhaps I, if you have two of them, one of them in the vicinity of the flagpole of Memorial Park, because there will be a lot of people in the park at that time, and also one in front of the Sacred Heart Church. If you can see, I actually, four in the morning, took one of those wheel tape measures and went right down the yellow line to measure that the whole distance. But I would like, more or less like staging area, like where the parade would actually come to a stop. Right. And the Irish so you do. could do their thing. I'll give you this one. I guarantee you that one tonight. What day St. Patrick's This on? one, we'll look into. St. Patrick's is on the 17th, and I'm... That's, I, I know, that's a good I, call on yeah, that one. That was good. I, Stay correct. with me. 13th. Yeah. But the parade, it, will but the parade will be on March 4th. Is it on a... Okay, what's Saturday. It? Saturday. That's what I'm asking. My only thing, and this is... I'm not going to stand in your way in any way, shape, or form, because I think you're doing a great job. Is everyone to be down here for the parade while the flag raising is going on? Because I was hoping everyone would be for the flag raising. Then shimmy on down and get on the parade. Because I would love to have they, a nice full park for the flag join, raising. They can join up the, the parade as we pass right here. This is more or less a dead zone anyway. We've got the gas station in Durham's right. and everything. Last year we did use the municipal lot for the staging area. Right. But I told my association, no, that people for attending the flag raising need that lot. So that's why we're going to... We've really never had that problem in the past where we had like, you know, 200 people. But I would love that problem. So if you make that happen, Danny, tell you what, if you get me 200 people to the rally raising, I'm working on that second set of bleachers. How many people do you anticipate there? Uh, 600. 600. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> Anywhere over 200 and less than 1,000 people. Really? Uh, that's, a, that's a great statement. Right no, this, uh, this year, I don't know if they ran them. I was in touch with the lady from uh, WHUD radio. She said that they would run some ads, but... Uh, there's a few things I'm working on. In fact, one issue, last year I wanted to get the O'Neill school band and cheerleaders to participate. After several meetings with the principal and band leader, they finally realized March 19th, that was the parade last year, they said the kids are going to be on spring break. And I was like, you know, after all these meetings, well, I tried not to roll my eyes. But this year, that's half the reason I planned for it to be on March 4th, so the kids would still be in school. After several attempts to meet with the principal and school band leader again, I was just contacted by the school band leader two days ago. He just came out and told me, I think it's going to be too cold for the students to be out. It was like, this was never brought up last year. And I was hoping perhaps somebody on a mayoral caliber. Deputy Mayoral Caliber? Drop a dime to the school and say, because this year, this is the whole thing. I want this parade more or less oriented to younger people. We, we older people have our own connotations of St. Patrick's Day. So do younger people. Uh, yeah. no, I mean, half, the, half the high school kids are down in the city. Stuff that's <laughs> entertaining for like younger people and this and that. And Speaking of younger people, if we can't get the school to do that, while they're in session right now, before they stop, we should get a hold of the uh, youth football program, who has two or three cheerleading teams, and see if they will participate in the parade as JBK, and we'll get them some green pom poms. All right. All right. Um, so let's let's contact them either way, and now you have definitely cheerleaders, no question, and we'll still go after O'Neill. But if we can't go O'Neill, at least we have cheerleaders. We'll hook them up with some green pom poms. Well, that's, I was even think, contemplating contacting Cornwall or Haldane, and when people see them marching up the street, they'll no. say, How come O'Neill's not this brain? Yeah, they'll if, say, you, if Cornwall shows up, the streets are closed. <laughs> I'll tell you right now, Cornwall, nah, not happening. But no, I, I just, I One wish other... that they approached this in a little bit more of an eager flight. Like I explained them, these kids, I'm certain they want to show off their abilities, exactly. their talents, be in a local forum like this and uh, I don't know, it's, it's a win-win situation, win. why, why they just have to come out and say, oh, it'll be too cold for the students to... That's what shots are for, right? That's what it's all about. <laughs> now, I don't know if you saw this last paper, don't look at me like that. Uh, two other contacts I'm sure you're already on top of, but I want to make sure you're aware of it. In the last paper, there were several students that uh, came down for homecoming with bagpipes. So we have a couple students that are bagpipers now. <laughs> One. And two, 
I know you changed that date also, so you can get the bagpipe and drums from West Point. We are in contact with them. Uh, they got to be contacted now, or they're going to be booked. We're more or less circumventing one Jim Fox, who uh, two months ago at the Chamber of Commerce meeting, afterwards he came up to me, all enthusiastic, gave me the application, his card, this and that. I filled everything out. I told him, I will meet you at your office to go. I don't want to play back and forth shuffle in the mails. So the day I was supposed to meet with him, he wasn't there. His assistant went over everything, said, Jim, we'll get in touch with you if there's any problems, but it looks good. The following uh, chamber meeting, I waited till the end. I approached uh, Mr. Fox, and he was more or less blowing me off, walking away. The last, the long and short of it is, he told me, you better look somewhere else for pipes and drums. And uh, because of that, I am looking to circumvent Mr. Fox, including getting in touch with the garrison commander tomorrow. And uh, another person on my association is working with several cadets who say, hey, Saturdays is our time. Mr. Fox or anyone else can't tell us. Jim's, Jim's actually yeah. pretty good. I'll talk to Jim and see what we can do. He actually did say that you can't have him? He, his words were, you might as well start looking somewhere else. All right, well, I'll, very I'll call him. And I even asked Mr. Modlin, the president of the right. chamber, I said, I don't know what happened in a month's time. I said, this guy at first, he's very enthusiastic. Now he acts like I shot his dog. He was like, no, so really. He was like, oh, yeah. here he's just turned the total. But uh, I will give him a call. I have nothing against him. I just want, I figured it would be good to have a West Point in there. Well, it's an ex they have an excellent uh, pipe and drum. Bad point. The garrison commander has nothing to do right. with the cadets. It's all through Jim Fox. So you're wasting your time. Really? It, okay. it, it really is. And I think it's going to, I actually was going to say something afterwards. I thank you, Mr. Devereau. It almost is a, a thing of whether they want it or not, they want their department heads to be in charge. So they, they, won't, they probably won't circumvent unless there's a, an issue. If Jim is telling you there's a problem, there's a problem. So I will call Jim and, and we'll follow up with him. But does he think that? It's a fundraising enterprise because that would kill it. I don't believe so. I told everyone I do have an account now down at the Wallfield Savings and Loan, which is a nonprofit account and uh, or a tax exempt account. We're a nonprofit organization. Any and all monies in the account after this year's parade, we still have to talk about whether or not we will roll them over for next parade or perhaps do something with the monies. Um, one of the things I thought about the morning of September 11th, I went between the South Gate and the Bear Mountain Inn, and I lowered 17 flags to half staff all along the main corridor, Main Street itself. And uh, some of the places, I, I was really surprised. The 9-11 Memorial Park in Fort Montgomery, the uh, Fort Montgomery Post Office, the Highland Falls Fire Department, uh, there, the, by Hannibal. Don't, don't, don't piss off any of you. Let's, let's let not name them all right now. But no, uh, I just noticed a lot of the flags and the ratings themselves were in disrepair, and I thought to myself, that'd be another good thing for raising money to so getting new right. flags. New I ratings. would, if I were you, and this is just a suggestion, and then we're going to move on, I would roll the money over. I wouldn't necessarily use money that was raised for St. Patty's Day to do a whole other area. I think that's a great idea, and I think that's something that you will get other people to participate in. And donate to, I think it's great. But what you don't want to do is mix. If people donate to St. Patty's Day, and you go, well, it's a, oh, you're right, it's a phenomenal no, cause. That's a good point. I and but that's happened in the past, and go, well, it's a good thing. It's it's the library, but they didn't. They already gave to the library. This was for something else. So I would roll it over if you want to do some kind of a, a St. Patty's Day thing or something or something in the village for Irish, whatever. You want to recognize that during your fundraising, um, as far as you know. It's going to pay for the parade, it's going to pay for this, and if there's money left over, it'll be for this. This way, again, you're, you're as open as possible, and anyone giving knows ahead of time my money went to where I gave it to. But um, as far as, we're going to follow up with Jim Fox. Um, we also have another local, lives over by Brian. 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 So, I, I, again, as many as possible we can get locally, it's awesome. But um, I think it's great. So we're going to give you... 
as long as they're okay with the board, we'll give them the one set of bleachers and we'll work on the second set only because we, I don't remember having two sets in one shot, but we'll, uh, we'll work on that. All right? Do you know Seth Gallagher over in Cold Spring? The name is very familiar. He organized a pipe and drum corps. He makes bay pipes, don't he? Yeah. And he's ex-mayor of Cold Spring. Cool. All right. No, I'll ask my mother. She, my mother must She'll know. know him. Yeah. Um, Good to go. A fellow uh, Pat Sullivan from yeah. Harrison. Right. He's from over there. But uh, I'm trying to. It would be ideal to have the West Point. Absolutely. But not just the pipes and drums. And that's the other thing is that yeah, if they're in their BDUs, it's almost green. So that's cool. There's other things that can be in the parade. So it's not necessarily just the pipes and drums. So, and if you would, I'm trying to, again, uh, we're trying to put things where we kind of think they are. Uh, the commander of the American Legion it works with uh, Dave Breezy on a regular basis, who was also, it's Jim and Dave that are two, mm -hmm. two to do it. So uh, we're trying to have the commander be the main contact for West Point support so that he, he knows the paperwork, he knows what's available, and on a, rather than having 20 different people ask for all these different things, having our community utilize one person as a focal point to work with West Point. So if you want, I can uh, I, I know him, and I can give you his number uh, so you can work with him. Okay. okay? I really appreciate that. If you want, I'll start with the uh, village hall tomorrow. I'll give, you right. I'll give it to you right now as we, move, as we move on. Unless you want anything else, feel free to come in at all times. I, this, is, this is thing is, just continues to build, and I love it. And the first one last year was really impressive for the first time out of the box. Well, that's been my new mantra saying is that I tell people it will be bigger than last year's, but not as big as the one that come. Every year, I want this parade to just get bigger and better. And put this little town on the map for one day a year. Let's go to Highland Falls. They have that parade. You should check with Stella Bailey and find out, you know, what Irish heritage we can drum up from our historical roots. Well, there's certain families in the area that are from certain counties are like thinking Flynn, about putting Allen. particular floats together representing. Kind of incognito. That's the Irish art. We're, we're from Tyrone. We don't put yeah. We don't put our name out there. <laughs> Thank you so much. Excellent. Okay. All right. So keep us keep us updated on your needs that we can help you with, and we'll we'll put we'll push forward. And I didn't know this is like more or less a workshop meeting tonight. The first the first meeting of the month is a formal meeting, and the second meeting of the month is a workshop. Alrighty. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you very much for your time. Good to go. Day. Any other comments? No. With that, I would ask for a motion to go into executive session to discuss personal matters. Motion to go into. Uh, Barbara, if you can stay.